disturbed because of their sin. Listen to what it says in Joel 2. You all know it. In Joel 2.15, it says what? Blow the trumpet in Zion. Consecrate a fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children, even the nursing baby. Let the bridegroom come out of his tent. Cut your honeymoon off. Amen. The bride from her dressing room. Let the priests who minister to the Lord weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, O God. Don't give your heritage to report that the nations be ruled over them. As a minister of the gospel, as a child of God, my prayer should be when I hear things are going on, God, spare your people. Jesus is forever now sitting on the right hand of the Father doing what? Making intercession. If this is not our position as leaders... This is not our position as children of God. We've hardened our hearts against the purpose and plan of God. I got another news flash, another bulletin. This might offend somebody, but this is a hot topic. It's an extra, extra. It's news. Jesus came for sinners. <laughs> Let me say it again. Jesus came for sinners. First John 4 and 14, and we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. That's our message. He is the Savior of the world. Matthew 1 and 21, she will bear a son. You should call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. First John 2 and 2, he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The whole world. Holy Spirit, help us with this this morning. Help us, Holy Spirit. Help us, help us, help us, help us, help us. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you. Thank you. Bring more revelation. Bring a deeper revelation, Lord God, where we stood on the sidelines or where we've said things, Father. Thank you right now that you will bring us revelation into how you want us to live our life according to your will, emulating you in everything that we do. Help us. Help us, help us to have a heart like yours. Help us to be compassionate on every level, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Isaiah 53. I'm going to read it out of the Living Bible. Listen to what it says. But oh, how few believed it. Who will listen? To whom will God reveal his saving power? In God's eyes, he was like a tender green shoot sprouting from a root in dry and sterile ground. But in our eyes, there was no attractiveness at all. Nothing to make us want him. We despised him and rejected him a man of sorrows acquainted with bitter grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way when he went by. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our grief he bore, our sorrows that weighed him down. And he thought his troubles were a punishment from God for his own sins. That's what we thought. But he was wounded and bruised for our sins. He was beaten that we might have peace. He was lashed and we were healed. We, every one of us, have strayed away like sheep. We who left God's path to follow our own, yet God laid on him the guilt and sin for every one of us. Every one of us. This is what he did for every one of us. So I can't, it's not up to me to determine you don't deserve this. You sure don't deserve it. And you, the way you've been living, you don't deserve this. Listen at this. This is what the Holy Spirit dropped in my spirit. I believe with everything, it was him. If we have hardened our hearts against these very ones, the very ones that Jesus left, left heaven for, if we've hardened our hearts, then in our self-righteousness, we have become a hostile enemy of the cross. A hostile enemy. The cross is a place of redemption. 
It's a place of love and sacrifice and reconciliation. It's a place that showed me my worth. That even if the world turns me around, spits me out and tells me you're worthless, I can look at the cross and say, but no, you're not. Because when every, anyone would go to the lengths that he went to, the price that he paid, yeah. that lets me know I'm worth something. So I don't care what the devil has told you, how worthless you are. You will never amount to anything. You just like this. And look at your dirty path. No, the cross says not so. The blood of the lamb has cleansed and washed me. All I have to do is accept him. Yeah. That's my benefit. Oh. Now I'm not going to be a hostile enemy of the cross. Because all sin and come short of the glory. That's the Bible. Let me say this. There is no superior Christian. I don't care how much you pray. You can speak in the tongue, speak in tongue five hours a day. It don't make you superior. May know all the Bible. Backwards, frontwards, inwards, outwards. It doesn't make you superior. We only have one superior one. And that is the Father. Yes, there's different levels of anointing. Yes, we respect that. You respect, you honor, you're supposed to, but you got to realize we can sit at the same table because I am where he play. He put me in this place. He set me in this place. Remember, I'm seated somewhere else now. And even though I may not be where I should be, I'm ascending to that place. Well, Christ is sitting on the right hand of the Father. He's in me and I'm in him. Don't tell me I'm not anybody. The cross proves you wrong. We all fall, sh we all fall, fall short sometimes. We don't get it right 100% of the time. But thank God for his blood, for his grace, for his mercy. That he has extended to us. He has extended us his mercy. We want mercy when we're going through things. We want sympathy. We want somebody to understand. But we don't sometimes know how to extend that. I want it, but I don't know how to give it. You know how to give it, but sometimes you just choose not to. Because once you get on the other side of the thing and you take a deep breath, whoo, thank God for delivering me. And then you look back and you see, well, I can't believe she's still there. You just left my side. What do you mean you don't believe out? You were there with me. You understand the struggle. You understand the mind battles. But on your other side of deliverance, you forget. We have to learn how to extend mercy. Matthew 18, 21 through 35. I'm going to read some of this because it gives a great example. A great example of what I'm talking about. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servant. As he began to settle, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold, listen at this, was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children all be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged. I will pay you back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. What happened? What happened? But when that servant went out, found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. A hundred silver coins versus 10,000 bags of gold. What did he do? He grabbed him, began to choke him. Pay me back what you owe me. But those who had just left and saw what his master did for him went back. And he told him because his servant fell on his knees and began to beg and said, please give me some time. I need some grace here. I just need you to understand what I've been going through. Yeah. My family, not just SGM, he's the savior, what? Of the whole. Glory. Glory and if we don't believe that, then John 3, 16 means nothing. He's the savior of the whole world. No, he's the savior of those that, he's the savior of the saved. No, none of us came here saved. We all had to receive the redemptive gift of God. Hallelujah. 
We are ambassadors of Christ. Somebody say ambassador of Christ. When you are an ambassador for a country, then that person, the ambassador, I don't care where they go. I don't care what country they enter in. They speak on behalf of the president of this country. And when they open their mouth, it's as, as if he is talking. Because they don't have authority to change what the president said. They can't change rules in the midstream. They can't change laws nor policies. Whatever has been laid down in the state, that's what they have to carry, and that is the message. And let me tell you this, they also have the backing of their country. So as ambassadors of Jesus Christ, you don't get to change the laws. You don't get to change the policies. You don't get to change what God has said. Whomsoever will, let him come. I came for the whole world, not just who you think should come. They lifestyle not like mine. You don't get to determine that. Your lifestyle wasn't like mine either. They deserve death. Jesus came so none of us would deserve it. As an ambassador, you speak only what the leader says. Nothing comes out of your mouth but what Jesus Christ, he said himself, I came to do the work of my father. I'm about the father's business. I don't make up my own rules. I don't say what I say. I say what the father says. I say what the father tells me to say. Well, then the same for us. If he so loved the world, then guess what? We got to love it too. It ain't nobody done nothing to us. Just because they live in a certain way. What is that? Do? How does that affect you? How does that affect us? That's an offense to God. And he doesn't even say, he said, I didn't come to condemn the world. I came that the world might be saved. They will be condemned by the words that my father have spoken. If your life, and I don't care who we are, we can pick and choose and think, well, we gonna get in a good side of hell. There is no good side of hell. There is, not, there is nothing in hell you want. Absolutely nothing. There's no good side, there's no reservation, there's no coolest spot, hell is hell. None of us wanna go. Amen? Amen. None of us want to go. And you don't get to decide who deserves forgiveness. Where did we, where have we come? Where are we? And let me tell you something else, stop expecting unsaved folk to act saved. You can't expect unsaved folk, you got saved folks struggling to be saved. But you're gonna expect an unsaved person to write a song you like? I'm not understanding, okay, I mean, you know, I know I'm country, I know some, you know, I, I'm just, I'm not getting it, I'm not understanding, okay? Because whatever is being put out, it means nothing to me. None of what you say represents who I am, but you need saving. When you tell the mothers, hey, put this name on the, on the altar, that's our responsibility. Tell God to turn lives around. Send forth their angels. And let them minister grace to their heart. Let them have an encounter like never before. Visit them in their dreams, God. Let something happen that'll go past what they can buy with their money. Go past how far they can travel in their own private jets. Do something, Lord God, that'll show them that you're God all by yourself. And beside you, there is none other. Do something in their lives, Lord God, that'll let them understand. You created the heavens and the earth and all they that dwell therein. Do something. Not a message of hate. Not, not a message of hate. Not in this season. Amen. We just don't get to decide who God will forgive. And you better be glad because somebody might have been on the other side. Now, don't save Regina. Don't save her. But you glad people can't decide? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When we think about that, oh, but they is a murderer and this and that and the other. That is true. Those are bad things, but he's a good God. Does he forgive that? Yes. Yes. He forgives all of that. If you confess your fault, there is nothing he's not going to forgive. Amen. Don't matter. And as children of God, we have to have that attitude and mindset. He 
came for his people. Jesus came for sinners. Go tell somebody. Text that. Yeah. Tell them that. Jesus came for real, for real, came for sinners. And guess what? Whom you and I were one day. He came for sinners. And I don't get to decide, Sister Brenda, who can't come in. Amen. Jonah thought he could decide. Mm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Jonah thought, you know what? I heard God. I heard him. I heard what he said. I heard his command. I, Jonah knew the voice of God. He had heard God's voice before. And he knew God was talking to him. And he told, he knew God said, go to Nineveh and preach against that great city. Jonah said, not doing it. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to Tarshish. Nineveh is 500 miles from my house. Tarshish is 2,500 miles. I'm going to go the extra length. I'm going to go out of my way to disobey God. And I'm going to pay money to get on the ship to go. This is what I'm going to do to disobey God. I'm running in the opposite direction. They don't need to be saved. They are horrible people. And they were. Everything he said about them was true. But God said, their wickedness has come up before me, and I've got another plan for these wicked, proud, idolatrous people that's been against my own people for years. You mean you're going to bless my enemy too? Good Lord, what is this coming to? God going to forgive my enemies. What is this all about? Nineveh, Assyria, the Assyrian people, they were hostile enemies. He, they, he didn't like them. And I sure ain't going to preach to them. I'm not telling them nothing. I'm gone. I'm out. And this, this ship is going to save me. This water going to save me. He just forgot. You already know God. He made the ship. He made the water. And you will obey me this day. Get on that ship if you want to. I'm going to make you get off of it. Guess what? I'm going to have them to throw you off. And that's exactly what happened. There was a tempest that arose. You all know how the story goes. And it was as if the boat was going to break. And guess what Jonah is? How you going to go to sleep? You done disobeyed God, paid money, gone way out of your way, and you went to sleep. You really meant to disobey him, didn't you? You really meant to not do what God said. If you can go and go to sleep and there's no conviction. See, some of us sleep. There, there's no conviction any longer. I mean, if they die, Lord, you know what? I, I told them one time. Now, they ain't do what I say. We get offended because people don't do what we say as if we died. We still here. Jesus died. Again, again, Jesus came for sinners. I didn't do any suffering. I get the easy part of this job to tell people about the love of Jesus. That should be easy, right? When I learn how to separate sin from sinners, there is a person that sins, but there's still a person, still a child of God. That's who he came after. I'm not going to be a hostile enemy to the cross. I'm not going against what God has said just because I'm offended because I told them 20 times they ain't came to church yet. They ain't said nothing. They ain't doing nothing. They not offending you. This is personal between them and God. You get the easy part. You get to learn to say, Holy Spirit, anoint my eyes so I can see all of your children like you see, like you saw me behind the blood. Let me see them and have the same love, the same compassion, the same tenacity to go after them like you did. You refuse to leave us where we are. You were a relentless lover. Jonah said, I'm not going. God said, okay. I'm going to flex what I got. I'm going to do what I do. I'm going to cause this storm while you sleep. These men don't worship me, but they got the sense enough to know somebody greater than us is at work. We call on our gods. We ain't getting no answer. The storm is still raging. Where's that other man? He told us he was fleeing from the presence of God. He down in the bottom seat. Wake yourself up. 
what have you done? Where are you? Who are you? What are you? What? Are you? Tell me, tell us something. He tells them, I'm a Hebrew and I fear God. You fear him now. You didn't fear him before. If you had a feeling before, you would have did what he said. You fear him now? You think you're about to lose your life? Yeah. God, I'll do it. I'll do it, Lord. If you just let, if you will let me out this time, I'm going to do, I'll serve you the balance of my days. Tell God anything. We did it. I know I did it too. But you learn, you reverence God enough, you stand in awe of him enough, you don't just go give him just idle words. He's not like talking to me. God's very particular about what you say to him. You said it. Jonah accepted this position. And you don't accept my position and don't do, you're an ambassador. You speak as I speak, you say what I say, you do what I do. And when they drew lots, the lot fell on Jonah. He said, throw me overboard. They tried to save him. They tried. They tried. No, you know what? We're not going to throw him over right away. We're going to roll harder. Maybe it'll get better. When it's getting better, they said, lift him up, throw him over. And as soon as he went over, the storm ceased. And they began to sacrifice. I'm going to sacrifice to somebody. And God prepared He's always got it prepared, even in our rebellion, even in our disobedience. God still prepares because he knew you were going to be obedient over here. So I've got to prepare on this side so that you can know that I'm God and will do what I told you to do. He prepared a fish that swallowed Jonah up. And for three days and night, I'm going to let you get a glimpse of what hell is like. I'm going to let you get a glimpse of what it is to be lonely. Seaweed all over your head. You in the belly or something. You don't even know where you are. I'm going to let you get a glimpse what it is to go down into a pit. This is not like hell, but this is where my people are headed. That you running from and you running from your assignment. And you know I told you to call your aunt. I told you you could text her, but you didn't refuse to text her. Now you need to call her. God is not mocked. He will not be mocked. And when he's doing that fish spew, Jonah prayed. Y'all go read, go refresh yourself in the book again. He prayed. He prayed a long prayer. He prayed remembering who God was. He prayed. And God caused that fish to spew him up out on the shores. The Bible said it would, have take, it would have taken three days to get to Nineveh. Jonah got there in a day. He got there in a day, and he began to proclaim, get your house in order. In 40 days, Nineveh is going to fall. Now, I want to read what happened. This blessed my heart. This, while we hold him back, and won't do what God says and won't minister and just being upset with people because just because that's a spirit of hatred. That's that's hatred, pure and simple. You can't hate people for any re you have no legal rights, warranted rights that you hate sin. And I'm not telling you that everything you preach to people have to have sugar on. I'm not saying that. It tells you in the Bible, there are some, you're going you're gonna to win them through the love and the compassion. You can speak a word to them, and they're going to come on. But it also says on the back of that, some you got to save by fear. You got to snatch them out the fire. They ain't willing to come. You got to just tell them, let me tell you something, you're going to get your life right. You're going to die and go to hell. And you're going to be there through eternity. Hell is real. You got to preach a message that's going to get whomever you're dealing with. You got to know by the Holy Ghost how to deal with them. By the Holy Ghost, not your ghost, wow. holy. holy. Amen. Amen. This is what happened when Jonah went to Nineveh. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim this message I give you. Jonah obeyed. He obeyed this time, didn't he? He obeyed the word of the Lord. He went to Nineveh. Now, Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through. Jonah began to go. Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. 
the Ninevites believed God. Listen to what happened. The Ninevites believed God. They believed the message that was preached to them. A fast was proclaimed, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. When Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, sat down in the dust. This is the proclamation he issued in Nineveh by the decree of the king. Do not let people or animals, your animals going to fast too. Everybody, fast. ain't nobody going to eat. Everybody. Do not let people, or just a real fast. This is a real consecrated fast, amen? Don't let people or animals, herds, or flock taste anything. Don't let them eat or drink. But let people and animals be covered with, they gonna cover the animals too. We gonna make, we not gonna leave anything undone, okay? We gonna make sure we get all this right. Your animals, anything crawling, whatever, cover it with sackcloth. Cover it with ashes. He, he, they might have left out something. I wanna make sure we follow this thing fully. Amen. Let the people be covered with sackcloth and ashes. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Do you hear this? Who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. Verse 10 says this. When God saw. Somebody say when God saw. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. Jesus, this is what he needs us for. He needs us to carry the message, not to determine they're not worthy, but to preach the message, hallelujah. He preached and he told them, and God heard. The people received. I heard Todd, Todd White's testimony, and he said, you know, I was in church. He said, nobody, nobody. I know I look scary. I know I was intimidated. I had been on drugs for years, still on them at that time. He said, but no one walked up to me and told me anything about, man, God loves you. They were scared of me. He said, they didn't want to approach me. Thank you for joining our program at the Master's Feed with Pastor Regina Moore. Soul Gathering Ministries is located at 7600 South University Avenue in Little Rock, Arkansas. For more information, call 501-773-1400 or go to soulgatheringministries.org. You may also email us at soulgatheringministries at yahoo.com. Join us next week for another inspiring word from Pastor Regina Moore.